The F.W. Fitch Company, makers of Fitch's saponified coconut oil shampoo and Fitch's shaving creams, presents Dick Powell as private investigator Richard Rogue. In Rogue's Gallery. Rogue speaking. Oh, don't look at me like that. Just because my shirt is half torn off and my face is scratched and my necktie is under my ear. I just walked into a store to buy a pair of socks. Right in the middle of a sale of nylons. (laughs) Oh, women. Long red fingernails, staring eyes, pushing, clawing. All elbows and high heels. Yeah. Anybody know where I can trade my pair of nylons for a white shirt? Oh, well. As I returned from this shopping expedition and was looking on the world at large with a jaundiced eye, I walked into my office and found this suit sitting there, overflowing with a large and robust gentleman with a toothy smile and the manner of a man who was just meeting an old school chum after 40 years of separation. I cringed a little as he rushed happily toward me with a hand like the business end of a claw machine clutching at mine. I'd never seen him before. Mr. Rogue, you are Mr. Rogue, are you not the celebrated investigator? Yes, that's right. Mr. Rogue, I'm very happy to make your acquaintance very happy. My name is Price, Pop Price. I'm called by those who know me. Well, have a chair, Mr. Price. Thank you, sir, thank you. I've called on you, Mr. Rogue, to retain your services. Uh, Mr. Price, how about starting at the beginning now? When you get through with your end of the story, I'll tell you mine. It'll be a quick yes or no. Man, a few words, that I like. Well, I'll be brief. I realize that you're a busy man, Mr. Rogue. Yeah, sure, go on. I am business manager for the Farrington Brothers Circus, the world's greatest show. You've seen the circus, of course, been running here for three weeks at the Coliseum. Well, no, I haven't, but I... Then you've missed something, sir. You've never seen Carlotta the Magnificent, the world's premier aerialist, the only woman in the world who ever attempted to swing through the air between two flying trapezes, turning four complete somersaults in midair, defying death without even the security of a net beneath her. It's a breathtaking sight, Rogue. Positively breathtaking. Now, look, mister, if you're selling tickets to the circus, I, I don't... I came th- here to employ you, Rogue, in your professional capacity to prevent a murder. Somebody is going to attempt to murder one of the circus leading luminaries during tonight's performance. Rogue, somebody has threatened to murder Carlotta the Magnificent. No kidding. It's a little unusual for murderers to issue invitations. Well, here it is, Rogue, the death threat. Mm. Oh. Can't get much out of that. Pasted on the back of a circus handbill. Letters cut from newspaper headlines. You'll die during tonight's performance. (laughs) Now, Pop, isn't that a little dramatic? How was the note delivered? It was on her makeup table this morning. Huh? Hmm. Do you have any enemies in the show? Well, frankly, Rogue, Carlotta is, well, she's the kind of a personality that makes enemies. She's uh, very sure of herself, exceedingly conceited. Matter of fact, she's what you would probably call an 18-carat died in the wool. Oh, oh, fine. Yeah. As strong as an ox, as smart as a fox. As mean as a snake and as brave as a lion. She's 38, but she still considers herself a fatal beauty. As a matter of fact, she's a fine-looking woman. Wonderful figure. Big brown eyes. Sounds like a fascinating character. Who would want to kill her? In strict confidence, Rogue, almost anybody who's ever had anything to do with her. Mm. Well, that narrows it down a little. Have you told the police about this threatening note? Yes, I told them, and I've told the newspapers. Oh, I knew you wouldn't want to leave them out. You know what I think, Pop? I think this whole thing is a press agent's dream. Lots of free publicity. Believe me, Mr. Rogue, you are wrong. Tonight only. Tonight only a special added attraction. See the murder of Carlotta the Magnificent, along with the greatest show on earth. All at the regular place. (laughs) Oh, Pop, thanks for coming in, but I... I Just a minute, Mr. Rogue. I have here something which I think might change your mind by way of a retainer. Oh, all that stuff. Well, that does help to convince me you're on the level. Shall we say $500? That's a nice round figure. Here you are, and here are two passes to the circus tonight. I'll see you there. Rogue, you must prevent that murder. Well, that's the beginning of our story. We'll continue in just a moment. But now, here's Jim Doyle. I'd like to say something to the ladies. You know that one of the rules of modern life is perfect cleanliness. For instance, women years ago would be horrified at the thought of washing their hair every day, as many of our Hollywood stars do. But then they didn't have Fitch's saponified coconut oil shampoo in those days. 
If they had, I'll wager they would have used it frequently. For Fitch's saponified shampoo always leaves the hair lustrous and easy to set. Made from pure vegetable and mild coconut oils, it won't dry the hair or make it harsh feeling. It cleanses thoroughly, too, for it makes loads of fluffy lather even in hard water. This lather whisks away every bit of dust and dirt, leaves your hair fragrant and sparkling clean. Ask for a professional application of Fitch's saponified coconut oil shampoo at your beauty or barber shop, or buy an economical bottle at your drug or toilet goods counter. Look for the bottle with the bright yellow label. And now we return to Dick Powell as private investigator Richard Rogue in Rogue's Gallery. <laughs> Ordinarily, I wouldn't go to the circus, even if the elephants carried water for me. But when Pop Price, the business manager of the Farrington Brothers Circus, paid me five bills to prevent the murder of Carlotta the Magnificent, I called Betty Callahan at her newspaper and asked her to attend the performance with me that evening. We went early. We wanted to interview the great Carlotta before the big show started. <laughs> Circus press agent was in today with a story on that threatening note. Mr. Addison had him thrown out of the office. Don't walk so fast, Richard. Wait a minute. He said no circus press agent was going to chisel any free space from our paper with a moth-eaten gag like that. Yeah. Well, he's probably right. Excuse me, Sonny. I'll tell you, we'll take him some pink lemonade and some cotton candy when we go back. <laughs> That'll make him happy, huh? Oh, sure. I'd better go back with a murder story if I have to commit it myself. Oh, really? Hey, buddy. Yeah? Where do I find Carlotta the Magnificent? What do you want with her? We're from a newspaper. We want to interview her. About that death threat she got today? Yeah. How did you know about it? Who doesn't? Everybody in the show is hoping. You mean they're hoping she'll be killed? We can dream, can't we? Carlotta's the worst nuisance that ever hit the circus business. I've been in this racket 20 years. I never knew a dame who could make so many pe people hate her so much. She's a genius. Well, thank you. Thank you. You stutter a little bit there, don't you? Sorry. Where do we find this nobody's sweetheart? You're on the right track. Last dressing room in this row. This circus must think Colada is hot stuff. Look at the size of that star on her door. Yeah. Now, Betty, I'm going to tell her I'm a reporter. I might be able to get more out of her. All right. What do you want? Well, we're from the Evening Bulletin. Oh, oh, you're from the press. I love the press. Did you bring a photographer with you? Come in. Well, the photographer will be along later. Oh, please, make yourselves comfortable. Uh, this young man is my manager, Frank Davis. Uh, hello, Mr. Davis. How are you? Here, take this chair, miss. Oh, thank you, Mr. Davis. And uh, now, you want to ask me some questions, no? Why, yes, Carlotta, if it isn't too much trouble. Uh, tell me... What is your last name? I am Carlotta. Uh, do we have to have this young lady here? I would like to talk to you alone. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Miss Betty Callahan. She's also on the paper. My name is Richard Rogue. Oh, you are a very handsome man, Mr. Rogue. You are strong, no? Oh, I managed to drag myself around. Oh. <laughs> but uh, let's, uh, let's talk about you, Carlotta. Uh, could we put this interview off until after the performance tonight, Mr. Rogue? Perhaps we could have dinner, you and I. You're not very worried about the death threat, are you? Me? Oh, no. Why should I worry? It's professional jealousy, that is all. Somebody is jealous of Carlotta the Magnificent. Someone who is less beautiful, less talented. That could be almost anybody. They're all jealous, aren't they, Frank? Why shouldn't they be? Believe me, Mr. Rogue, Carlotta's the queen of them all. I've seen all of them in the last five years, and Carlotta here's the payoff. There's never been anyone within a mile of her. Oh, Frank. Frank is such a sweet boy. He loves me. But I am tired. I am weary. Tonight I leave the circus. Huh? Well, when did you decide that? I decided two weeks ago. This is my last night as a performer. The circus world loses its greatest attraction after tonight's performance. Isn't that tragic? Uh, <clears throat> uh, Carlotta, does Pop Price in all of your decision? Price? Oh, of course he knows. His heart is breaking. What will his show be without Carlotta Magnificent? What will it be? Answer me. I don't know. It will be nothing. Oh, yeah. Well, now, now look, uh, 
What did you do when you found that threatening note? I turned the note over to Price. He turned it over to the police. Have you seen my act, Mr. Rogue? No. No? We're going to see it tonight, Carlotta. Oh, I am sensational. Well, uh, Carlotta, that note you received was lying here on your makeup table when you came in today, right? Yes. Young man, have you ever tried to do four somersaults a hundred feet in the air? Me? Without a net? Oh, now look, Carlotta, I, I want to know about that note. You don't want to get killed, do you? Look, I take a big swing, then four somersaults. Then I grab the trapeze on the other side. It is impossible. Unless you are me. This I have to see, Carlotta. Feel that bustle, Mr. Rogue. Sure. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> hey, that's something. Yes. You're as strong as in... Well, you're very strong. Yeah, and I've got the scars to prove it, haven't I, Carlotta? <laughs> yes. Frank and I were scoffling this morning. Look, open your mouth, sweetheart. There. The front tooth, I knocked it out. He is scuffling with Carlotta, who could tear him to pieces. She didn't mean to do it, Mr. Rogue. We were just kidding around. But I'm very feminine. I have a lovely figure. I dress very quietly on the street. You'll be proud of me when we go to dinner tonight, Mr. Rogue. Oh, I'm sure I will. Uh, look, Carlotta, I hate to be practical, but aren't you a little worried about the note? I mean, Pop Price is worried. Of course he's worried. He's afraid I'm leaving his show. You're on in ten minutes. Think. Pig. Don't pay any attention to him, Carlotta. I'll take care of him for you. Well, we'll have to hurry to our seats. We don't want to miss your performance. We'll be watching you, Carlotta. You will hurry. There will be a tremendous crowd tonight. This is Carlotta the Magnificent's last performance. Oh, kind of hard on the public, isn't it? Of course. I will see you after the performance, handsome. Uh, thanks for coming back to see us, Rogue, and you too, Miss Callahan. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we'll see you later tonight, Carlotta. <sighs> if she should live so long. <laughs> you know, Betty, I sometimes wonder if she really wants to talk to me after the show. You know, Richard, I feel that if I knew Carlotta the Magnificent just a little better, I'd kill her myself. She was absolutely brazen the way she flirted with you. Oh, now. And that Davis, he's young enough to be a son. She's a... She's a brazen flirt. Well, you could take some lessons from her, baby. What? That's a girl who knows what she wants. On second thought, the two of you should make a wonderful couple. You could just sit around and talk to each other about each other and lead a life of great bliss. Well, I'll say one thing for Pop Price. He figured us in for some good seats. We're practically part of the show. Oh, I love circuses. I think they're exciting. Don't you, Richard? Sure, sure. The first honest work I ever did was carrying hay for the horses when the circus came to town. <laughs> Come to think of it, I guess it was the last honest work I ever did, too. Oh, Richard. Well, you can be an animal fan if you want to. Personally, I like the clowns. Oh, I like clowns, too. <laughs> Look, Richard, look at that clown with the camera. Coming around here. See him? See him? Yeah. You mean the one dressed like a woman? <laughs> look at that hat. <laughs> Isn't it ridiculous? You've got one just like it, haven't you? Oh, that's just like a man. The hat that clown has on has real fruit on it. Apples and oranges and grapefruit. <laughs> oh, look! <laughs> well, at least the hat's practical. Did you see Mario grab that apple off and take a bite out of it? Yes. Mario? Is that the famous Mario? Why don't you look at your program? I paid two bits for it. Oh. That clown in the red, white, and blue outfit with the putty nose and the big shoes is Mario. The highest paid clown in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Your Wonderful attention, one, please. About to enter. The Farrington Brothers the Circus. Class. Quiet. The greatest show on earth. Proudly presents the most sensational attraction ever to be seen on any stage, in any circus, or any theater. America's premier circus proudly presents the greatest aerialist of all time. Carlotta must have written I that herself. Quiet, jealous. Jealous. And the performance of a and death-defying feat. No net protects this intrepid artist from certain death. In case of a mishap. Good. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, the feature attraction of this great show, Carlotta the Magnificent. <laughs> Well, there 
here comes your girlfriend. She's climbing up to a trapeze. Oh, a beautiful figure, hasn't she? Lovely for her age. Now, kitty, 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 Shut kitty. Shut up. Well, Carlotta the Magnificent is ready to go. You'll soon find out whether you're covering a hoax or not. You don't think there's any doubt of it being a hoax, do you? Baby, I'm not sure of anything. Well, I wish this were over. So do I. Well, there she goes, out on the trapeze. That's all she thinks, a big swing. Looks like a tough way to make a buck, doesn't it? Well, why doesn't she jump? She's gathering momentum. Here come the somersaults, Betty. Richard, she's falling. She's falling, Richard. That note meant business, Betty. Come on. We've just witnessed a murder. Turn to our story in just a moment. But now here's Jim Doyle, the man from the Fitch Company, who wants to say something about one of his favorite subjects. That's right, Dick. Fitch's no-brush shaving cream is a favorite subject with me because men are always so pleased with it after they've tried it. Fitch's no-brush combines three different shaving ingredients into one easy-to-use cream. One of the ingredients, a special skin conditioner, helps prepare even a tender, sensitive face for a solid comfort shave. Fitch's No Brush also has a creamy, non-greasy texture. It helps the razor do the job in a hurry, even if your beard is tough. When you've finished your shave, your face feels cool and refreshed and smooth as can be. For men who prefer lather, there's Fitch's Brush Cream. It gives lots of rich, dense lather that stays moist all during the shave. Rinses off easily, too, leaving your face feeling smooth and pleasantly cool. Join the thousands who have found shaving pleasure through their switch to Fitch. Both Fitch's brush and Fitch's no brush shaving creams contain the special skin conditioner for sensitive faces. And both come in handy 25 and 50 cent sizes. And now Dick Powell as private investigator Richard Rogue in Rogue's Gallery. I get invited to a lot of things, but this was the first time I was ever invited to watch a murder. As I sat there in my box seat at the circus and watched my self-elected dinner date, Carlotta the Magnificent, tumble to her death, I felt a great emptiness. I would probably have shown how I felt with much more gusto if Betty Callahan hadn't been practically tearing my arm off. The whole place was in a turmoil. And it took Betty and me quite a while to get down to where Lieutenant Urban was standing not far from the body. Please clear the arena. The upper exit's in leaving. Use the upper exits, please. I've got to call my city desk. Well, go ahead, Betty. You can find a phone someplace down around the business offices. I'm going to talk to Urban. He looks a little upset. I'll be right back. Right. Take it easy now. Yes, I'll I'll hurry. What are you doing here? Well, I'm working for the corpse. What do you mean, working for the corpse? Well, it's simple. I was hired to keep this from happening. Who paid you? Pop Price, the head man of this outfit. How did it happen? Well, there are two 38 caliber bullets in the body. Somebody did some nice shooting. Oh. While the drums were rolling to cover up the noise, and the arena was darkened except for the spotlight on the victim. Wow. That's very nice planning. Now, stay right here, Rogue. I may want to talk with you later. Okay, I'm not going anyplace. Hello, Price. Mr. Rogue, may I speak with you a moment? Are you Price, business manager of this layout? Yes, this is horrible. Where were you when it happened? I was standing in the entry back there. I was worried. Oh, you were? Of course he was. He'd been warned that Carlotta was going to be killed at this performance. I can handle this, Rogue. You don't think I had anything to do with it, do you? She was leaving the show. This was to be her last performance, wasn't it? Yes, at least she intended to quit. She was always threatening to quit. Uh, And this time it looked like she meant it, eh? What would happen to your show if Carlotta left it? She was the star, wasn't she? Yes, she was the stellar attraction. Uh Uh-huh. So you'd have been in trouble. She was spotting you, wasn't she? And you took this way of getting even. That's a good theory, Urban. Thanks. Who was with you when it happened, Price? I was alone. Mm, careless of you. Somebody punched a hole in your meal Please ticket. Now, arena. don't leave the Use premises. The I want to talk with you later. Where's the, the dead woman's manager? I want to talk with him. He's in her dressing room. 
His name is Davis. Oh, he is, eh? Well, we'll call on him there. Come on, Rogue. Richard, wait for me. Well, hurry up, Betty. Urban marches on. All right, Davis, we just want to ask some questions. You have been associated with Carlotta for five years. Who would have wanted to kill her? Believe me, Lieutenant Urban, if I knew I'd murder them. You don't know what Carlotta meant to me. I loved her. She had a lot of enemies, but... Just uh, name off a few of them, will you? Well, she had a run-in with the animal trainer, Cliff Stewart, the other day. And a big fight with Mario the Clown last week. And she and Pop Price weren't getting along very well. She threatened to choke him to death a few nights ago when she was threatening to quit and taunting him about it. And, well, it must have been one of them. They didn't understand Carlotta. They didn't know how to handle her. One of them killed her. Davis, uh, did she leave a will? Who gets her money? She had no money, Mr. Rogue. She spent it as fast as she got it. Sometimes a little faster. I tried to get her to save some money for the future. But she was too big-hearted. If she didn't have any dough, how come she was quitting a thousand-dollar-a-week job? Her doctor ordered to take it easy for a while. Her heart was acting up. I had it all fixed for a three-month rest in Mexico City. That's what she wanted. We found the gun, Lieutenant Urban. Where? Right by the third ring. The gun is a Smith and Weston, 38, and there were two ejected shells laying right by it. Well, it must have been dropped as soon as it was fired. That, that gun belongs to Mario the Clown. How do you know? I have seen it in this trunk a thousand times. So has everybody else in the circus. It's his, all right. It's got his initials on the butt. Mario, eh? That murdering skunk. I'm going to kill him for this. He did it. He shot Carlotta. Mario was standing in the ring, right about where the shot was fired, just a few minutes before the murder. That's right, Richard. We were watching him when the house lights dim for Carlotta's entrance. Yeah, that's his routine. I'm going to find him and... Davis, take it easy. I think the police can handle this. This is a personal thing. Give me that gun. Cut it off, Davis. Now, sit down. Hey, take it easy, Davis. Now, where's Mario's dressing room? Right next door. Uh, come on, Urban. Let's go see how funny this clown really is. Mario! Mario! Open up! This is the law. You know, he just may not be in there, Urban. Well, we'll see. Oh! Richard! He's dead. Hmm? Uh. No, I don't think so. He's been chloroformed. Smell it? Look, here's the bottle. He's still got the saturated cloth in his hand. Well, don't stand there waving at my face. Well, why would he chloroform himself? Well, what makes you think he did? Murderers do funny things. Come on, let's get him out of here. Help me lift him, Rogue. Now, wait a minute, Irvin. Why don't you wait until he comes out of it? The way you're going at it, he'll be in the electric chair before he wakes up. You saw him right there at the edge of ring number three just before Carlotta was shot, didn't you, Rogue? Yes. Anybody else around him? No. And Carlotta was shot with Mario's gun. That's all I need. I'm taking him down and booking him for murder. Betty, I bet if your paper prints that story the way you see it, you're going to live to regret the day the printing press was invented. Urban's jumping the gun. Nobody ever went to that much trouble to frame themselves to the chair. Look, Richard, I'm your greatest admirer and all that, but you're just being bullheaded. Nobody but Mario was near the spot where the gun and the spent cartridges were found. Pure logic proves that he's the guilty man. Well, somebody might have been impersonating Mario. Oh, that's ridiculous. Hey... What are you doing? I'm going back to the circus. There's one piece of evidence that everybody forgot to check. I'm not at all sure I like being alone in the menagerie at midnight. No. Well, hang on to my hand. We'll be in the main arena in just a minute. Thank goodness there's some lights in the arena. Yeah. It's an awful-looking place in here, isn't it? <sighs> I don't imagine we're improving it much. No. Okay. All right, now, now here's the third ring. Mm -hmm. When we were watching Mario, 
He was right about here, wasn't he? Yeah. Over this way a little, I think. Well, it's, it's bound to be here someplace. Richard, what are you doing down on your hands and knees? I'm looking for a clue, baby. A clue that's going to send somebody up for murder. I'll show that urban guy how a really sharp investigator works. Oh, let's get out of here, Richard. Well, it's, it's got to be here someplace. Well, someplace. I've got it. I've got it, Betty. Drop it, Rogue. Huh? Drop it. Huh? Oh, okay. Okay, Davis. I always do as I'm told when I'm talking past a 45. You killed Carlotta, didn't you? Yes, but I'm not going to be arrested for it. Nobody I can prove I did it but you, Rogue. And you're not going to live to tell it. And neither is Miss Callahan here. All right, Miss Callahan, get over here. Over by Rogue. Oh. You think you can get away with killing us here? It's worth trying, isn't it? Well, okay. Look out, Betty. Duck! I didn't have anything to lose, so I rushed him. I may not be as strong as Collada was, but I was stronger than Frank Davis. And I had the advantage of some judo I'd picked up during a date with a hat check girl. I got the gun away from him and turned him over to Irvin. He admitted killing Collada. She was quitting the business and demanding an accounting of her cash. Davis had gambled most of it away. He knew Mario's routine, so he slipped him a Mickey borrowed his costume and his gun and took his place in the arena that evening. And you know, when he was impersonating Mario and Betty and I watched him take a bite out of an apple, he got off another clown's hat, remember? Well, I found the apple and that's what convicted him. That front tooth Carlotta knocked out of his mouth gave him a kind of an uh, individualistic bite. It showed up as plain as the nose under Raddy's face and the part of the apple that was left. <laughs> Smart work, huh? Well, they executed Frank Davis for the murder of Carlotta the Magnificent. She was, uh, uh, she was quite a girl. Quite a girl. Betty didn't seem to like her, but, well, after all, women are all alike. Everyone you meet is different. You know what I mean? This is Dick Powell again, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed our story tonight. Ray Buffum wrote it. Leith Stevens composed and conducted the music, and Dee Engelbach produced and directed. But don't forget, uh, you've all got a date with us next Thursday night. We have a story for you about, uh, oh, about a girl, a boy, and a gun. So make a date with us, will you? Thanks for listening, and now here's Jim Doyle. Be with us again at the same time next week. Oh, and by the way, be sure to see Dick Powell in his latest RKO picture, Cornered, at your local theater soon. Remember, tune in again next Thursday, same time, same station, when you will again hear Dick Powell as private investigator Richard Rogue in Rogue's Gallery. <laughs> Remember, if dandruff is your problem, ask for Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo. It's the only shampoo made whose guarantee to remove dandruff is backed by one of the world's largest insurance firms. No other shampoo can make this statement. Ask for Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo at your drug or toilet goods counter, beauty or barber shop. Fitch is spelled F-I-T-C-H. Fitch.